Hello. In this video, I will show you how to write a multi channel chat server using the Lucy WebSocket extension. And this video assumes that you watched my other videos, so I will not go here into the details of how to set up the extension and the basics. So if you haven't watched the other videos yet, please watch them first. So the first thing uh, we're going to do, let's set up a directory for the example, we'll call it chat and we'll open sublime text here and also uh, let's open command prompt and launch Lucy. So the code for the example is in the wiki under the example chat page um, and for the sake of saving time I will simply copy and paste the code from the example and go over it to explain how it works. Uh, the code contains, the example contains three files. The main thing is the chatlistener.cfc file which is pretty much uh, the chat server itself. It follows the listener component API and it implements three event handlers from the API on open, on close, and on message. The other two files are application.cfc, which simply uh, registers the WebSocket uh, at an endpoint of uh, WS slash chat slash channel, where channel is a, a path parameter. We'll get to that in a minute. And index.cfm which is pretty much a, a client page. It sets up a, the session variable when passed the URL parameter and some basic uh, JavaScript uh, bootstrapping which uh, saves time from typing over and over again the whole uh, boilerplate code. So let's first uh, grab this code and create a file Call it chat listeners. Let's save it as chat listener.cfc. Paste the code. We'll create also a file index.cfm and grab this code from here. And also application.cfc. So the first thing that will run uh, get executed is application CFC is uh, on application start. And all we're doing here is creating a new chat listener object and registering it, it uh, for the WebSocket endpoint at WS slash chat slash channel. Now channel uh, is in braces here, which means that it's a path parameter. So what that means is that according to um, whatever the client will connect to, channel will be translated to, to that. So for example, if somebody uh, connects to WS slash, channel, uh, slash chat slash support, then channel will be resolved to uh, support. If it's a service, it's just the name of the channel. It can be also whatever you want, you know, like a movies channel or a singles channel, whatever it is. So this is a application.cfc. Then we have index.cfm. The first thing that we're doing here, we're enforcing some basic uh, kind of like uh, session state we require that session that username will be set because we don't want just random connections let's say coming into our chat server so in this case we're checking if a url that the username exists and if it does we set session that username to that uh, if session that username does not exist or is empty string then we 
show a kind of an error message and abort the request. We also set a, a default value name, like the value is actually also default, to the uh, parameter name channel. Then we have some uh, boilerplate JavaScript code here that again if you watched uh, my previous videos you should be familiar with. Um, so let's look at the main file chatlistener.cfc. So again that file implements the listener component API. Everything is documented in the wiki and we're implementing here uh, three methods, three event handlers on open which accepts a WebSocket object, endpoint config, session scope and application scope. Um, so whenever a new connection uh, from a client connects to the server, this function is executed. Uh, what we're doing here, we're checking that session scope has a username value which is not empty string. If it is empty string or does not exist, then we return false, which essentially rejects the connection. If we get to this uh, point in the code, then we call notify channel, which is a helper method uh, down below in that file. We'll go, we'll see it in a second. Uh, we pass the WebSocket object and we pass some data uh, saying that the message is coming from the server and the message is that the username from the session scope is connected. On close works uh, very similarly. Uh, here we don't need to check the session state anymore. We assume that it's valid. So we call notify channel. We pass the WebSocket argument uh, and we say that the user is disconnected. And then we have the on message event handler. Uh, on message event handler accepts a WebSocket object, a message object, a variable, which is an argument, which is a string, session scope, and application scope. And again, we call the notify channel uh, method. We pass the WebSocket, we'll see in a second why, and then we say that it, the message came from a session scope, the user name, and we pass the message itself. So notify channel is the helper method that uh, does the actual sending or broadcasting of the message. It takes a WebSocket object and a, a data struct. Uh, from the WebSocket object, it gets, it extracts the path parameters and it takes the one that's called channel. Now channel is a special path parameter because um, whenever you use channel as a path parameter, when, it, when a client connects, it is automatically subscribed to it. It happens by the extension behind the scenes. It happens automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about that. If you use any other uh, path parameter name, then you need to actually uh, subscribe and all the information for that is in the wiki. So anyway, uh, we get the connection manager from the WebSocket object by calling get connection manager. Uh, we add to the data the channel itself, the name of the channel it is, and a timestamp that shows the time in milliseconds since uh, epoch. And we call broadcast on the connection manager, passing into it the channel ID to broadcast to and a JSON serialized representation of the data. So let's see how it works in practice. I'm going to go here to localhost 8888 slash w slash, I'm sorry, it's examples. Okay, it's from before. So example slash should be WS, no? Let me see. Hmm, examples check, yeah, that was correct. Okay, so 
since uh, we don't have a session that username we get here that error message saying session username is not defined say using the URL parameter so I'm going to use here three different browsers I'm going to use uh, Chrome Firefox and Edge so in order to keep track easily I'm going to use uh, names like Chrissy for Chrome because it starts with CH and this is actually what we get when we connect with the username here and what happens here is that since this is index.cfm we have this code that ran and the title here says Chrissy on default that comes from here and this came from the document right there command let's open the console so now we have w ws chat object which is a websocket object that connected to a uh, local host at port 8888 through that uh, to that endpoint because we didn't specify a channel in the url the default channel is default so that's the reason that you see here slash default um, so now let's go ahead and connect with Microsoft Edge. Let's paste this URL and for Edge let's use Eddie. So now we can see that user Chrissy received a message that's saying Eddie connected with the timestamp and the channel message came from server and this is exactly what we implemented here in the on open event handler uh, we notify the channel that uh, the new user connected so we can open here also the console we can see that we I have also your AWS chat and now uh, if this user sends IAD then this user received here the message on a channel default from Chrissy saying IAD and let's add another client here and this is uh, Firefox so let's call it Freddy and as you can see both clients received the message at Freddy connected came from the server on channel default let's see here also Freddy connected so now Eddie can say to Freddy, uh, hello Freddy. And since it's a channel in a chat room, in a chat server, anybody who is subscribed to the channel will receive that message. So again, those clients are currently all connected to um, the default channel so now let's connect to channel uh, movies for example so now connected to movies as Chrissy and this is now a completely different connection than this one so we have two different connections on two different tabs so um, let's open also another one on channel movies. So again, this one also. We have Freddy on default and Freddy on movies. And if Freddy on default will send a message like um, this is the default channel 
then the users on the default channel will receive that message like Eddie on default and um, Chrissy on default but Chrissy on movies did not receive that but if Chrissy on movies will now uh, send a message like any good movies coming up this summer then you can see this was sent on the movies channel Oops. and whoever subscribed to the movies channel will get, get it uh, this one is not so we will not get it but we get to this one also is not if we get to Freudian movies you see that the message uh, coming from Chrissy in channel movies asking any good movies coming this summer and then uh, Freddy can answer with something like uh, nah I rather read a book And again, only subscribers to the movies channel will receive that message. So, this is it for this video. I hope that uh, it helps. And um, thank you for watching.